Uh, my name is Daniel Phelps. I'm from York College. We're a city university uh, school, we're a four-year liberal arts institution. Uh, we have about 2,500 students right now, but it fluctuates between 2,500 and 3,500 or 4,500, uh, depending on how well the, uh, the market is doing. Um, so in 2008, we, I think we got up to 4,300 students um, uh, when everybody went back to school. So um, we kind of had this big influx of, of folks. Um, uh, I am, uh, I work for the Department of Performing and Fine Arts. I'm not an engineer. Um, I, am a, uh, I am an editor, uh, a videographer, documentary filmmaker by trade, but I've always been a maker. I have an MFA in integrated media art. Um, so I've done high-tech art installations using Arduinos and you know, uh, programmable electronics. Um, but uh, my background in television and film, um, I've always made my own camera rigs from 3D stereoscopic rigs, uh, uh, mobile fly cams, you know, all of this stuff that was always out of my reach, um, out of my reach financially, so I just build it. And I think that's part of what the maker movement is about. And uh, two or three years ago, we started a, 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 a kind of a, a new movement in our, in our uh, uh, concentration, which is uh, uh, our concentration is, well, our, our, our program is communications technology. And um, uh, with a small amount of funds, we built a maker space. So uh, we, I created a capstone course um, in the communications technology program called Hacking and Building. And it's, uh, it's all about, well, kind of taking things apart, understanding how to use them. Now you can understand it in Queens in an urban environment, we don't have a whole lot of people that have ever really used a screwdriver. And I'll talk about that in a little, little bit. But um, I'm really here to talk about, um, uh, to talk about um, our NASA funded programs. Uh, the past three years, we have been fortunate enough to receive um, about $50,000 worth of funding from NASA for two separate, uh, two separate research programs, research and development programs. One is called the NASA Swarmathon, and that's, a, that's with, in conjunction with the University of New Mexico um, and NASA Swampworks. Um, that's a programming competition. Um, um, and the other one, which is the more exciting one, and that's the one I'm really going to talk about today because it deals with digital fabrication, is the, Nas uh, the NASA Robotic Mining Competition. Um, so the NASA Robotic Mining Competition um, is actually in two weeks, so we're, we're building our robot right now, and our students are toiling away, and I'm not there to, to help them out, but, but it's okay. Uh, uh, the first year, I actually got a little bit of feedback that um, I was too involved, and I found that actually becoming uninvolved and pulling myself out of the system has made the system leaner and meaner and uh, a little bit more efficient. So I'm going to talk about reverse engineering inspiration, how, to, how these students were able to do this, uh, to do this uh, project. This is our third year in a row. Um, um, from cots to cardboard to open beam. Uh, I love that everybody's talking about cardboard first because uh, it's something that we do uh, great. It's like the quickest and cheapest and easiest thing to do um, and hardware software and sponsorships So give a shout out to some of those folks. So the NASA Swarmathon and the NASA Robotic Mining Competition are um, uh, Were the were kind of the driving force uh, for us to create York Astrobotics. So if you go to yorkastrobotics.com, it actually pushes to our Facebook page, but outreach is part of both of these competitions. So we have a huge outreach uh, arm. We actually have students that are just in charge of running the Facebook, Twitter, um, doing the video and all of this other stuff, um, in addition to doing all of the digital fabrication. Um, and uh, it, it allowed us to move into a larger fabrication facility. Uh, it, allowed us to it allowed us to ask uh, the city council of New York City uh, for, for more money and we've, re we've received $3 million to create a uh, digital fabrication and entrepreneurship facility which, which should be built in the next three to five years. It's sitting money, so it takes a little bit longer to do. Uh, so uh, right now, you know, as far as, uh, as, far as tools, you know, we have, a couple uh, we have a couple of MakerBots, um, we have some Connex machines coming in, we have a ShopBot, um, we have a ton of hand tools, and we have a ton of, uh, uh, a ton of woodworking tools. Um, in addition to that, we just got our new sponsor, Blue Eagle Labs. Uh, they make Delta printers of just about any size, and um, they just shipped us uh, two brand new printers, and they're, they're multi-material, uh, uh, multi multi-function, 32-bit, you know, high-end printers that, um, that are really uh, pretty amazing for um, what, what we're doing. So um, this is our third year in the robotic mining competition, um, and we, uh, we are, you know, the purpose of the robotic mining competition for Na from, from NASA's standpoint is uh, that it's crowdsourced. They, they're crowdsourcing technology, programming, 
um, designs um, and they're shoving this out to the higher education system and saying whatever you make come and compete and the best the best models the best application the best use case scenarios um, and the most efficient and the winners we will take your IP and we will use it in future NASA uh, Mars and lunar missions okay and um, you know uh, we're, we are expected to build program excavate return okay um, regolith okay and I'll show you a small video of, of what it looks like but um, it's a week-long competition uh, down at, down at the Kennedy Space Center um, it's actually in two weeks it's from the 21st through the 26th or 22nd through the 26th this year and year, uh, all year long, our students um, are, uh, they hit milestones, engineering milestones. So they write an engineering paper, they do outreach program, they have to show proof of life, life that their bot actually exists and works. And if you do all of those things, it goes from 150 teams down to 50 teams um, that actually compete. Um, uh, this year, there's only 48 teams. So our first year doing this as a non-engineering school, as uh, not, with non-engineering students, um, with a very small maker space, uh, we placed 35th out of 50, our very first year doing this. And we are a minority serving institution, and I had seven students um, that were physics, co co communications technology, and um, um, computer science, which actually our computer science program doesn't teach the code that we actually used on our bot. So, um, but it took a lot of that to happen. Uh, last year, we actually got DQ'd because of a, of a very small pebble um, that uh, that uh, hit our drive shaft, and we weren't able to uh, we weren't able to finish. But we were able to actually uh, 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 learn a lot from that and 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 incorporate those things into our bot um, this year. So, as far as iterations go, this is our third iteration. It's our York Bot Mark III. Um, you know, uh, and we're, we're really excited that, that you know, um, we're actually able to do this every year and we get a lot of support from our administration, um, from our private sponsors and from the city council to do this uh, because we, we share a lot. We go out to high schools, we go out to grade schools, we bring our robots, we do demos um, and uh, it's really gotten us, uh, it's gotten us a lot of support financially and uh, a lot of support from, uh, from the community. So this is the robotic mining competition. Uh, essentially, what you're uh, required to do is uh, you start in one spot, you go to one area, you dig, you pick up, and you dump in another area. That's it. You, uh, what you see there is not sand. It's BP1 called Black Point 1. Um, I'm actually going to pause this video real quick because it's going to get kind of crazy. Oh, there we go. Um, this, is our, this is our Mark II robot. Um, uh, you know, it, it's all about, it, it's not just about how much your robot uh, uh, mines essentially. Um, it is about that. That's a very large part of the rubric in the in the in the in the system of scoring. Um, uh, but there's also electromechanical things that, that you have to worry about. So height, weight, um, uh, how much data that you're using. You know, it's it's really they and, and, and you're controlling the robot either autonomously or from about a hundred yards away in a command module that used to command the space shuttle. Um, and, uh, and you know, they monitor every single thing and they really do do a good job simulating a real uh, telecommunication environment. And um, the BP-1 is actually crest, crushed regolith, it's crushed lava rock, and it's got this really harsh texture, so you have to be in a full uh, a full back suit um, to actually even be in the arena. So the, the students get you know fully dressed up, they have to vacuum everything out, it's caustic, it's really kind of bad stuff, but they do it, they bring in four tons of it um, just for this uh, program. So last year uh, we, uh, you know, I'll talk about what, what level we compete on as a non-engineering school, um, but we created a, a brand new system that had never been used before. And every year, our goal is to compete for the Innovation Award. Not to compete against, you know, um, University of Alabama, who's won it pretty much every year uh, for the past four or five years, um, because they have a $400,000 robot, and they have an engineering school and a lunabotics facility um, that's just pretty much dedicated to the research and development um, of the, this type of robotics. So we can't compete at that level. So, so we compete at the level that we can compete, and that is, uh, that is uh, creativity, okay? So we create, we create very unique uh, uh, dig and dumping systems that we haven't seen before at any of the competitions. And, um, and because we're working with NASA engineers, and they are the judges, um, those are the people who we want to impress, and every year we do impress them because they've never seen anything like it. Um, so this was a system that was kind of a, it, it scooped, um, it was a winged system, it opens up and it scoops, um, and then it closes and then it dumps. Uh, we got, uh, we, I think we got three runs, we got a practice run and two, two, two real runs during the competition. 
um, and our practice ones weren't great, um, but uh, our, our competition run didn't. And um, so we got stuck and all we could do was move our arms back and forth. So the students put together a tiny video of, um, of a successful mission um, of our bot. Uh, they made this really cool kind of gif. You know, we, we, uh, a lot of our students are media students, so um, they show the bot kind of flying through space and you know, there's some, there's some Kubrick stuff in there. It's, it's really kind of neat. Um, uh, but our students that, that do participate in this, they, um, uh, first of all, they're unbelievably passionate about this project. Um, it's helped our retention um, of our physics and computer science students. They stay. You know, a lot of times, because we're a CUNY system, we're the second largest uh, 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 university system in the U.S. next to Cal State, um, we service, I think, 400,000 students. They can take any class anywhere within this CUNY system. And lots of times we have folks come over for computer science or for physics and they take a couple years and they're like, well, you know, it's a smaller school, so it doesn't have all the resources. Um, I'll tell you what, every student that's gone through um, our, we're not calling this a program, it's a collaborative um, because it's not officially a program or a club or anything like that. This is a, this is a robotics collaborative um, that we um, uh, that we all contribute to. So, um, so as an engineering school, how are we able to compete every year in this? Um, so last year we actually did come in 47th. The first year we came in 35th, and this year we're hoping to co come in the top 20, and we really truly think that we're able to do this. Um, so this is the Easy Cheese Bot, if anybody's ever seen that. Um, uh, one of my favorite kind of uh, gifts out there. Um, so uh, the first thing we do is we reverse, reverse engineer uh, inspiration. So we do not reinvent a wheel, we make a better one. And um, I love these, I put these in almost, this is the third uh, iteration of this presentation. Um, I've done this presentation on diversity, I've done this presentation on uh, how NASA crowdsource, uh, crowdsources their, their, uh, their ideas um, uh, to save money. Um, but uh, you know, if you see a great master, you always find uh, that he used what was good in his predecessors, and that it was it, this, it, wait, and that it was this which made him great. Um, Gady said that the immature poet imitates, the mature poet, poet plagiarizes. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Now that's a disputed, you know, some people say Plato said that, some people say Steve Jobs said that, but Plato did, and this and that. But they're all kind of the same thing. We look at, uh, basically our first year, um, all we did was look for uh, a vid videos on YouTube called Rule 32. And this was the proof of life videos for every single other university that was participating. And we looked at what everybody else was doing and we said, Everyone is doing the same thing. They're all doing the, the, the standard, this drum system, and all the winners have, are, have the same design. And the purpose of this competition is to push innovation. They don't want, NASA does not want the same design over and over again. So we said, we are not doing anything like anything we've seen, anything they've seen before, okay? And, um, and that's, that's how we're able to innovate and able to impress um, and able to actually score fairly highly on, on, on the innovation. Now, have we won the innovation award in the past two years? No, we have not. So we've gone to uh, extreme lengths this year to create our, create our own category um, that, uh, that NASA hasn't recognized officially for this event, but we are going after uh, um, uh, cost per kilo. So we're trying to make the smallest, cheapest, uh, robot that can dig the most and that's the rubric that we care about. NASA doesn't officially recognize it for this uh, for this uh, uh, competition. I'm working on that. Um, they have a really great feedback system that they don't seem to respond to. But <laughs> but cost per kilo is a lot because we're also within the Swarmathon competition. If you know anything about Swarm Robotics, it's about having hundreds of robots that work together um, to do to, to kind of cover the surface. And you know you send about uh, you send 100 to Mars. If 80 make it, that's great. If 50 uh, actually make it make it four or five days, that's great. If 30 uh, make it 20 days, that's even better. If five of those actually find minerals that are useful um, that's what swarm robotics is all about so um, we are trying to take some of those concepts that we're using from both of the grant funded programs that we have and incorporate them together um, in, in our in, in our in our bots so um, so we build upon the backs of giants we look at what everybody else does we do a ton of research into what other folks are doing even what caterpillar is doing caterpillar is one of the main uh, one of the main sponsors of the program um, so not our program, but the NASA program. Um, so we, we look at what's efficient, what we can do, what we can do in-house, the tools that we have to work with, how much money we have to work with, um, which is usually very little. Uh, this year, our bot, uh, we did all the R&D, everything for 
I think around three thousand dollars. Okay, um, and that was uh, provided through the space grant, the New York New York State Space Grants Consortium, um, and that was provided in two fifteen hundred dollar kind of chunks. Um, so that uh, that allowed us to um, to really. I think doing less with more is a big theme of this conference, and um, that this allows us to do, to really have to, we, it pushes us to really try to innovate without having a lot of money. Because, you know, a lot of people say money will fix a lot of your problems, or, you know, if it's a problem that can be fixed with money, it's not really a problem. Well, uh, that, that's a problem for us, you know? So, um, so we compete on our own playing field. Um, uh, we do as much research, uh, we do a post-mortem um, every summer of, of our bots and, and how to make them better. Um, and then we create a compendium of, of uh, Creative Commons and open source resources that we can pull from. And, and this is the community that we pull from. And we also give back. So um, from Cox to Cardboard to Open Beam, we are not engineers, but we are all engineers. Okay? Um, I used to say we are not engineers a lot in this presentation, but uh, I've learned to realize that we are all engineers. Um, we are all just different forms of educated engineers and non-educated engineers. You know, uh, who's used a screwdriver is usually the first thing I say for new students coming into the, uh, coming into the collaborative. Um, because a lot of our students haven't used a screwdriver. Um, these are first and second generation uh, immigrants. You know, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, I don't have a whole lot of students who've ever been in a workshop before, much less a makerspace, much less used a screwdriver. So it's a real question that I ask. Um, and we, we kind of level up as we kind of get them used to um, uh, using the tools to create um, what they need to create for the, for the collaborative. Um, so we, like I said before, we have physics, computer science, communications technology, biology, and performing and fine arts. I'm in performing and fine arts. I'm within the communications technology program. So uh, within the program, um, this this entire uh, this this entire project, this project and the Swarmathon project, as well as my own work, um, has pushed us into creating a, a new major in digital fabrication, which would be the first major in digital fabrication within uh, uh, the City University of New York. Now, even, even our yes, even our engineering schools do not have uh, uh, Brooklyn Tech does not have a digital fabrication concentration. They don't even have a makerspace for crying out loud. Uh, Queens has a makerspace that they're building in their library. Right now, but it's just it's a couple 3D printers with one one person who knows how to use it. That's another common theme of this of this uh, 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 this conference. Um, and we've we've started uh, a makerspace consortium um, within the City University of New York, so we can share resources. So if somebody's got a laser cutter, a shop bot, this and that. You know, we can we can bring people in and they can come over and use our stuff. So um, that's another way that we uh, bring down the cost. Um, but we're very close. You know, I can pretty much get to any other college campus within 30 minutes, and there's 16 of them. So, um, and I think 10 have currently have maker spaces. So it all starts with cardboard and woodworking. Standard tools, um, that's our first prototype that happens in the fall. Um, we choose well-documented resources, resources that we know are not going to change in the next year, okay? So if it's a platform, um, like uh, let's say, one, two, three D design, right? Um, that they phased out this year. Uh, we've moved on to Fusion 360. Okay, so um, uh, we choose open and flexible ecosystems. So Arduino. Um, um, uh, right now, we're using BeagleBone, BeagleBone Black, um, with uh, uh, with an open source SUSE Linux, Linux, I think, um, and open motor controllers like the Ro uh, the Robotech controllers. Um, they're essentially just an Arduino inside, and they can all be controlled via serial communication. And they have great pinouts and all of that stuff. Um, the first year we went, we went with straight up commercial off the shelf system. Uh, we were given the grant in December and we only had four months to turn around a robot. So within four months, we cobbled together and found experts out in the industry that could help us build our uh, Gen 1 robot and we did it. Um, uh, it used a lot of, basically we bolted a lot of great parts together and we learned how to use electromechanical systems. Um, one of the, one of the rubrics for the competition, at least this competition, is it can't, you can't use a technology that will not work in situ. So, um, you can't use hydraulics, you can't use pneumatics, um, you know, the tires can't be pressurized, all of these things. So, um, you know, we're, we have linear actuators and, and motors and we have to kind of close everything off in a box and make sure that it's not exposed to uh, the regolith in general. So year two, we did COTS plus AD20. Is anybody familiar with AD20? Uh, AD20 is uh, uh, extruded aluminum uh, made by a company, and it's great because it uses quarter 20 screws and bolts and stuff like that, but it's big and it's heavy. Um, so uh, so we, we were, I think we were about three pounds underneath 
uh, underneath the, 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 the highest weight we could get. Year three, which is this year, we started with cardboard, went to open beam, did a one half scale, uh, one -half scale model. Uh, we created, uh, we, well, we used a lot of open source uh, connectors for open beam and extruded, extruded aluminum. We made our own. Um, we 3D printed them and we put the whole system together. We made a half scale test platform and then we, all we did was uh, make all of those connectors 200% uh, in size and they fit perfectly into our extruded aluminum that we got from Home Depot. Um, um, it's a lot of fun because all of our students are unbelievably engaged and we went from having five students the first year, all men, to now we have 12 students and it's 50-50, six and six. Um, so we have men and women from, um, it's truly interdisciplinary. Um, you know, we've, we, uh, we, we, we're not really fancy with this. We're very, you know, instead of three iterations, we usually have six or seven iterations because, you know, without doing the math and the load and all of these things that, that, uh, that a, an edge, well, a true engineer would do, right? Um, we kind of, you know, we put things in spots put weights on it, see if it tips over. You know, if it does, we widen things out, we do all these things, and uh, we are on the third iteration. Um, so building upon what we've learned over the past three years, um, we, we just try to be as efficient as possible. And we try to make, uh, give ourselves our, our hard deadlines um, and have two separate teams, one working on the electromechanical system, um, another working on the programming, okay, and make that as sleek as efficient as possible. But we also have help. Um, uh, we have uh, a hardware and software sponsorship. So Blue Eagle Labs, um, they make 3D printers. They're in Southern California. Um, they just sent us two of their brand new all metal Delta printers. Um, and there they can print 400 by 300 by 300, uh, which is pretty big. And we wow. can use we can use lots of, and we can actually scale that up because they do use uh, an open source beam uh, platform. So um, we can make it as tall as we want, as wide as we want. You just kind of re-plug in the Cartesian map and you're good to go. Um, um, and SuperDroid Robots has really been a, a great resource for us. We can give them a call. Um, we buy a lot of stuff from them. Uh, so uh, how to use it and making sure that um, our five volt pinouts and everything work. Uh, but lots of times we do not have the money yet um, to put this together. So we actually build our own linear actuators um, uh, for our one half scale model. Um, based on uh, open source designs through Singiver Thingiverse and, and other repositories on the internet. So before we even get the money, we just use what we have, um, build all of our stuff together, and we can, we can kind of really flesh out that cardboard design into something real. And creating a linear actuator uh, for about $4 when they're, uh, they're around $120 for uh, the length and the force that we need for competition um, is pretty amazing. And this was done all on students' time. I actually showed up in the Fab Lab one day and it was completed and I was really blown away that it actually worked, you know? And they asked me, me for 20 bucks for the motors for it. So um, so this is a very small video. Um, this is our one half scale design, um, talking about some problems that we're having with it. But if you notice, all of the connectors, um, they're all custom connectors um, that the physics students built and tested and iterated and spent long nights doing. Um, and without, um, and, and doing it half scale allows us to print things out very quickly um, rather than full scale. So we're able to iterate very, very quickly or they'll have three or four different iterations on the build plate at one time. Making sure that the mechanical systems work um, early on in the process is really, really important because you don't want to run into any of these problems later, especially when you're starting from scratch, which is what we're doing this year. Um, so uh, our design incorporates uh, it's basically not meant to turn around, so it goes out and drives, digs, and drives backwards and dumps backwards. So, so that efficiency is built in. It's also probably going to be one of the smallest spots in the competition. So it's going to dig less, but, um, but the cost of the robot um, is around 200, $200 $45, I think, um, uh, because we're going to swap out the motor controllers. The motor controllers are actually the most expensive thing. And I, and I tried to get them to uh, build the linear actuators themselves, uh, 3D printed, but they were, they were the tolerances really weren't there with our uh, 3D printers. Um, so um, so we kind of, we decided to buy buy cheap stuff from, from China, which was great, um, uh, but we're kind of we're regretting that right now. So um, open source with a catch, um, you know, these partnerships have really uh, allowed us to do some really great stuff. Uh, the Delta printers offer us a large print volume, um, co and a huge cost saving compared to Ultimaker. Love Ultimaker, but uh, uh, but our robots, are, are, our 3D printers are only around $500, and, and we build them ourselves. Um, and it also allows us to do, uh, to uh, cheaply up upgrade our 3D printers piecemeal. So 
32-bit controllers, uh, Olsen Ruby tips, um, different print servers. We can add all of these things um, to our open source 3D printers that you can't really do. You're kind of locked in. Even Ultimaker, you're kind of locked into some of these things. Um, and we can use new filaments. Um, unfortunately, we haven't figured out nylon yet. Uh, it's kind of a pain in our ass, but PLA Plus is really great. ABS is really great. Uh, the carbon fiber filaments uh, are, are starting to get really, really good. Um, and we've even, even uh, experimenting with stainless steel now that we have a printer with the Ruby tip. Um, uh, you know, we use Tinkercad for remixes. Uh, we use uh, one, two, three D design. We still actually use it a little bit um, because we can't get some of our stuff over. Uh, we use Fusion 360, BeagleBone, Linux, um, and we've never looked at a product or a method that wasn't well documented or proven um, because we are we want that community and we feed off that community. And that community, this is our new bot this year. This is our proof of life video. Um, and the only thing that wasn't hand built. Um, essentially, uh, other than the motors, obviously, and the, the actuators and the wheels, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, everything else was manufactured in our facility um, using standard tools and aluminum. So, um, so yeah, I know my time is up. I'm trying to fit a 60 minute, uh, 60 minute presentation in a 30 minute bag. But, um, but thank you for your time. If you ever need to reach me, I'm on Twitter. You can email me. Um, um, but this is our third year. We live in we leave in two weeks. Um, if you go to the robotic, robotic mining competition, they do a live stream every year, and they have hosts and everything. It's pretty, it's pretty rad. The competition? Uh, the competition is the 22nd through the 26th. We start competing on the 24th, I believe, is when the competition actually starts. Thank you so much. Yeah, and that's that's all my time. Thanks.